Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Fasher Scotty. I am your host, a very sleepy Scotty McCoy, and boy, do I have a, a surprise for all of you. I have on Zoom with me right now, Angela Joseph, and she is the producer of plenty of uh, films in the indie community. She's been, uh, you know, she was um, a producer on Terror 2 and 4, The Evil 3, 13 Fanboy, Night of the Tommy Knockers, Staycation, Arena Wars, Bermuda Island, Camp Pleasant Lake, and so many others. How are you doing, Angela? I'm doing wonderful. And that was the worst timing ever. My son just came home and uh, the dog started barking. So, yay! We're doing yay great. For dogs. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. As we were talking about earlier, I'm so tired. Uh, been up uh, since four o'clock, and it's my first day back at work. You know, start at four thirty. Um, first day back at work after a week long vacation last week, and uh, I'm so tired. <laughs> oh so, my goodness, yeah. I understand. Yeah, it's gonna yep, be. I got to a get bit a nice of the COVID. Day. I got yeah. a bit of the COVID. I had to quarantine and get better, so now I'm all better. Well, that's good. Did you have any major symptoms or anything? Yeah, it was a really bad headache this time and chills and a nice fever. Um, yeah, cold sweats. So second time having it, um, vaccinated. I'm going to get a booster soon, so that should okay. uh, help with that. But um, I was able to get over it in about three days and then uh, stayed on the little five-day quarantine and I get to go back tomorrow. Yeah, I, I'm surprised I've never had COVID, at least anything symptomatically that I've noticed. Um, but I never oh, tested okay. positive, which is crazy. I'm vaccinated, boosted, and everything. Uh, but even before that, I'd never gotten anything. And I'm just surprised. I think I had I think everybody had it at some point. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I, think <laughs> I, so. I, I, I might have had it at some point. I just maybe was asymptomatic. I really don't know. But I know I was never really deathly ill like a lot of people have been getting. Yeah. It's yes, good. and then it wasn't it wasn't that bad, but uh, it was definitely something to take notice and slow down and uh, get better. So, yeah, we got that handled, and now we're Absolutely. back to normal. Absolutely, back to you know, back to the grind, as they say. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. And speaking of getting back to the grind, first question for you: How did you get into being a producer for films? Um, I'm a bit of a, a computer geek. I'm I'm a nerd first. So I was, uh, you know, um, doing my normal um, geek job with Hewitt Packard and then uh, was a little bit bored. There wasn't anything to do really, you know, after you were done at work. So we were in New Mexico and um, they had amazing opportunities to be background extras and the whole family could go and we'd all get paid and we got to be in the last stand with, with Arnold Schwarzenegger and um, Odd Thomas with Anton Yelkin and we also got to be in uh, episodes of Breaking Bad Ooh. episodes of in plain sight so we had some uh, we had some fun um, back in New Mexico with that that's awesome. And speaking of New Mexico, 13 Fanboy filmed there a lot. So, like, what did you do for that film and what did you think of it? Um, 13 Fanboy is like a passion project. I absolutely love the Friday the 13th franchise. As you can see, I've got my uh, James Stokes Jason mask right nice. there. And I have um, 13 Fanboy on the wall and um, another Deborah Voorhees um, autographed from it. I'm an associate producer on the film mm -hmm. and I helped get the word out with crowdfunding and uh, um, for the uh, campaign when we were um, funding for it. And it just ended up being a larger than life, uh, you know, um, passion project because Deborah is uh, Deborah Voorhees from part five. Um, is absolutely amazing and she brought on the most stellar cast I've seen for an original you know script this isn't uh it's it's 13 fanboys original script it's not a Friday the 13th um mm -hmm. part of the franchise so to speak right. yeah absolutely yeah. and uh Debbie's a good friend of mine. I had her on uh, three times I interviewed her. Um, she was actually my third ever interview I've ever done for the podcast as well. 
Um, so, oh, yeah. that's awesome. I can't yeah. wait to meet her in person. Yeah. I'm blessed to be working on um, Rocky Mountain um, Nightmares, yeah. which is a horror convention and international film festival coming to Denver May um, 12th through the 14th. And um, they just announced D Wallace. Ooh. And D Wallace is in 13 Fanboy. Yeah. And I finally get to meet D, and she'll be yeah. out here in Colorado for that convention. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, I interviewed Dee once and uh amazing lady, very funny. Um, she was on set on a set for something and uh she she said, I can only give you 30 minutes because I'm I'm in hair and makeup while I'm doing this interview and just before I did video interviews. And uh she ended up giving me like 35, 40 minutes. Like she went over the top oh, nice. rush me or anything. Like it was very professional. She's like, I didn't I made a commitment to you. I'm not gonna cancel and back out and have to reschedule. Like I made a commitment to you, but I gotta be in hair and makeup while I do it. I'm like, that's even better. That's even better. I know that was a bonus. That's so awesome. Absolutely. Um so what do you believe is like the hardest part regarding being a producer for films? Um, you have to have a lot of patience mm -hmm. because you, you get really excited and and things take a lot longer than mm -hmm. it seems like on the on the outside. Right. Um, you know, some years some films can go a minimum of like three to five years and then mm -hmm. upwards of you know some projects it takes 10 to 15 to get everything done it's mm -hmm. it's that would be the main thing that's the hardest part about it is time yeah you have to have a good time management because like especially when you're doing indiegogo crowdfunding campaigns because oh uh, yes yeah because doing those like you have people you have perks that you have to fulfill but you don't want to, mm -hmm. even if you have to fulfill them, you don't want, you would rather give them a good project, even if it takes longer than they anticipate, than actually fulfill, you know, rush through the editing process and everything, just so you can fulfill yes. the DVDs and all that, because then they're going to be mad that you end up get rushing it because, and gave them a shitty movie. Like no one wants to see a movie that isn't yeah, good. Yeah, production value is key. Production value is key. And you make sure that the teams that you're working with um, are all about the production value. I do a lot of projects with the Mahal brothers, okay. um, Sonny and Michael, and um, all the perks always, you know, get taken care of. Uh, and the production value is always there. And the campaigns are always run, um, you know, in an outstanding fashion. Mm -hmm. So working with them for years and on different films that are at different stages mm -hmm. of, of completion, post-production and distribution, some, you know, they just finished it at American Film Market at AFM. And I know a bunch of them um, that they they took. I'm a executive producer on, so it's going to be fun seeing how all of this, you know, comes together with the proper teams. Now, Staycation is another one that's just an um, amazing team. Russ Emanuel and Bill um, Victor Ruikin, um with Staycation have been an absolute powerhouse, and we have so many. Um, awards now for the trailer which is great and then yeah. so many awards yeah. for the prequel which was routine routine has just been killing it for the past year and a half at the uh, festival on the festival circuit and now staycation everybody we can't wait it's going to be an awesome film that's exciting that really uh, is and i know there's a, there's a couple of people i know that are in staycation i know one of them is Derek webb i believe is in it as well um he okay yeah and it, i'm really excited to see that movie and uh even the evil three um which is uh being held yes. by dj uh Vecchio, um and that's going to be really cool and that one's uh more about you know a, a, a killer trio so to speak of leatherface jason and michael um so what what can you tell everybody about the evil three and what do you what to expect from that you're going to be rooting for one of these three. Mm -hmm. The Evil Three is an absolutely awesome fan project. And um, CJ has uh, been doing a fantastic job with everything. Um, the I'm a, I'm a Jason girl. I'm a Jason and a pretty boy. And pretty boy isn't involved in the evil three. So you know what I mean? I yeah. have to uh I have to make sure I, you know, team Jason Voorhees, because he was my that was my number one. Mm -hmm. He was pretty scary for me. Um, until Freddie 
Um, but Freddie's not part of the evil three either. So, you know, <laughs> we also, I also just finished um, with uh, doing marketing, pr- publicity and promotion for the Sawyer Massacre, which was a Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm-hmm. fan film. And that's on YouTube now. It's only been released for about um, about a week and a half, two weeks, about maybe. That, yeah. But yeah, so it's, uh, and you've had Steve Merlot on your show mm-hmm. before. Yeah. So that's yeah. another epic project that I've been, in, um, you know, blessed to be involved in. Yeah, absolutely. I saw it. Great, great film. It is. It's fantastic. It's yeah, it's got a great production value. The best part about it, I think, would have to be, no spoilers, obviously, but the best part about mm-hmm. it was uh, that it was filmed in Texas. Like, I know, cool I know. That? Steve was so excited that everything was coming together and it did. Everything came together wonderfully. Yeah. And that's, you know, one one thing that I, I pride myself in doing in my um production company okay. is making sure that everybody's eyes in the community get a look at projects that I'm involved in, whether it's producing or doing publicity and marketing, you know, and when you're produce, when I'm producing, I'm always, I always have something to do with the, you know, with the crowdfunding and, um, you know, private investments are always great too and crowdfunding and then, you know, pre-sales and, you know, merchandise, all of that. So it's a lot that goes into producing, yeah. but I found my niche and I get to do what I do, you know, mobile. I get to you know i get to be a remote producer on most of my projects absolutely yeah and that's that's even better that you can you know you don't have to i mean sometimes it's great to be on set but there's nothing better than not leaving your house (laughs) exactly exactly (laughs) another one that's in the festivals now is um king on screen and that one um is a documentary um in stephen king's uh you know, um, kingdom. So that is going to be an absolutely amazing project as well. And I know that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm with Legion M and Legion M is, is an amazing, uh, show or is amazing company and a first fan owned production company, you know, in history. And when I was, I'm a, I'm an elite film scout with Legion. And when I was, uh, scouting our last, uh, our last event, I saw King on screen pop through and I'm like, oh my God, because I'm publicity <laughs> for King on screen. So I was like, oh my God, it's got to be my number one. And it was, it was my champion through, you know, that festival's um, round of voting. And, um, you know, like movies like Mandy, we got Mandy from um, Sundance and we got to scout that, you know, mm-hmm. so that was, you know, there's been a lot of movies that we've gotten that um as, as scouts members investors uh, whatever are able to yeah. put a finger on and say i want that and and then we get it you know like jay like um jay and silent bob reboot you know that was an absolutely dream project to work mm-hmm. on you know absolutely absolutely and i bet you would give anything because i know it's coming out it's been announced not much details but I bet you would give anything to be either on the set or even remote working for the prequel, the Friday the 13th, Crystal Lake, coming to Peacock. I saw, <laughs> I saw. My friends always the joke with me that um, I'm, I make it to almost 90% of the sets through the Stargate because Dean Devlin's a good friend and, and he's also Legion M. And when he opened that Stargate for us many, many years ago, you know, he left the Stargate open and I like to use the Stargate, you know, to, to visit sets and, and, Mm -hmm. and help promote and, and just get a peek. It's really cool. Yeah. I'm hoping that with that prequel coming out, that could be my, uh, league to get victor miller to come on for a second time because he was my very first interview all the way back in 2016 and i lost the interview um as my as like i was transferring my my uh podcasts over and it wasn't even a podcast at the time i was just doing personal oh no i loved it and it eventually turned into a podcast and there was two interviews i've lost and it was with victor miller my first one and Stu charno from part two of friday the 13th which is my second interview i've ever done those are the only two i don't have ever and i'm so up oh no oh no i would be too that's heartbreaking 
Yeah, it is. It is. Um, but we know that with indie films, um, Indiegogo is really the way most of them get done because it, without, you know, any type of budget or financing, which, you know, they, they're, it's really hard to make a movie, at least a good one. And Indiegogo is the crowdfunding way of getting mo- these movies made. Um, and we do know that there are a few bad eggs that slip through the cracks. I mean, there are people that say they're going to mm. make a movie and they don't and they scam people. And it, that's just the nature of the business, um, it's, you know, because that's just there's bad people in every aspect of every, you know, every. That's uh, true. Business. So what do you That's true. Right. So what do you uh give to people like advice wise on people that might be hesitant to donate to crowdfunding campaigns due to these bad eggs? So what advice would you give to them on how they can try try to trust people and want to donate? Well, it's it's a matter of it's a matter of looking at somebody's track record. So we all see bad eggs, okay? And we all see independent filmmakers are doing something that's this is the first time you've been able to do to use equity crowdfunding in order to um fund your films i mean it's like you get to pitch the horror community okay so for the horror community i know i always end up getting um you know perks from projects and you know sometimes that takes a while Mm -hmm. so it's like sometimes i'll end up with uh you know with with the with mail and i'm like what is this i open it up and one for example a few months back it was um mary axmas one and two or Mm -hmm. three and two and three something that i had you know uh Mm -hmm. put money into and you know associated Mm -hmm. uh, produced and and Mm -hmm. And then uh, oh, two weeks ago, it was the, the Sawyer Massacre t-shirts arrived. You know right. what I mean? So it's just wonderful. It's not shopping, but it is supporting the indie community and getting that swag that you, that you, mm-hmm. you know, so desire. But I also recommend knowing who you're investing in mm-hmm. because it's an investment, whether it's for a movie or a t-shirt or, um, you know, a role or to produce Mm -hmm. you know a lot of people have followed my suit and don't like necessarily give money to be a producer but actually work you know you got to do the work when you put in the work there's a lot more that you can receive so Mm -hmm. I get paid to produce and I also sometimes in the past have donated my time and Mm -hmm production to help a project like 13 fanboy Mm -hmm. you know i went i went in to that helped them fund it shared the holy shit out of it you know to where it was all over new mexico because i run a really big new mexico um extras casting page and deborah is still on that page if she ever needed to, to fund anything else she could share directly as herself or Mm -hmm. as you know 13 fanboy because i gave her that right way back then years ago Mm -hmm. you know because when you should have a transparency when you're promoting when i'm if you guys see me promoting somebody you know i know the directors Mm -hmm. so it's not a matter of oh angela's just shared this so maybe we shouldn't look at it or no, it's Angela just shared this. Maybe we should look at it because mm-hmm. Angela has been working with the director she's been working with for anywhere from five to 10 years. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to something that I'm involved in and you're like, Oh, wait a minute. I know that person, that person, or that person did this movie, this movie and this movie. And then when you look at the Mahals, how many millions of dollars have they raised and mm-hmm. you know, like 13 films. I mean, they're amazing to work with. They do great work. So you got to get behind people that know what they're doing. Yeah. And when it comes to just uh, just an independent film, I don't want to back that kind of stuff. I want to back something that's got production value. I want to back something that's got some A-list stars. Mm-hmm. And I want to produ- I want to back a team that is I know is going to yeah. get the final product out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like there's, there are crowdfunding campaigns, like even 13 Fanboy. I got my DVD from 13 Fanboy, but um, Me too. It, it took a while. But that's because, mm-hmm. it, you know, if they if they ship that out 
like say a, even a year after um I after the Indiegogo was done, I'm gonna mm -hmm. expect the final product and suck because it, you don't get a movie filmed and edited and out in a year. It takes a couple no, of years you don't. minimum. It takes a couple of years it minimum. Does. Like what like for our movie, our movie we had our Indiegogo last spring in 2021. We filmed in the summer and the and the fall of 2021. Um, and, uh, and, uh, we filmed, uh, some of, uh, of, you know, this year, um, and most of our principal photography is done now, but we still have to edit and we're a two man band. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so people are going to wait for their perks. Like uh, they will get their perks, but it might take four or five years till they get them, but they're going to get them. The movie's already mm -hmm. been shot. We got all the footage. <laughs> exactly. How, exactly. Yeah, and that's how it is with every with every production, especially when you're doing an Indiegogo. You're not really donating for the merchandise. You want to help them out. The merchandise is an added perk exactly. for, for them. Um, but but if you believe in the project and you believe it's going to get done, you're going to help them. And if you and even if the project has some type of unexpected halt that it doesn't get done or it takes longer to get done, then you think well. I, I it's not really a loss if I spent you know ten dollars on it or whatever oh yeah not at all not at all and then if you are so you know if you're developing your career or your fandoms you yeah. know this gives you ways to develop those fandoms because yep. so many things that you get from supporting these films and the indie community you know we just finished colorado festival of horror for the second mm -hmm. year out here and that yeah. was absolutely fantastic we had mm -hmm. stellar guests and okay. and um you know wonderful merchandise and mm -hmm. i can't wait for rocky mountain nightmares and then mm -hmm. colorado festival of horror again next you know september yeah. so we're starting to, to bring, you know, some scary stuff to Colorado because okay. I guess the pandemic did change one thing. It made everybody want a piece of it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Not just L.A., not just New York, yeah. not just San Diego. Yep. You know, we all want those those cons. And, you know, yeah. the Comic Cons are one thing, but I really, really enjoy horror conventions. Yeah, I went to my first horror convention on September 30th, October 2nd of this year. It was Monster Mania in Hunt Valley, Maryland. And I got to meet so many amazing people. I met uh, somebody I wanted to meet my whole life, Nancy Loomis from the original Halloween, Charles Cypher oh, from nice. the Halloween, Halloween Kills. Then I met a bunch of Halloween Kills, uh, Halloween people. I met James Jude Courtney, Anthony Michael Hall, um, Aaron Armstrong, Tom Jones Jr. And then, of course, I met like Quinn Lord, Tom Morga. So oh I my god so many cool people and you'll appreciate tom morgan because he was in part five with debbie sue Voorhees. And yes, he played, uh, yes. Jason behind the mask so that was exciting doing all the stunts and oh that. that's great and, yeah i met him he was so cool and yeah i met uh, i met warrington gillette i met him as well um so there was there were so many cool people that i got to meet um and it, it was an absolute blast um so yeah, I, I I I mean, if anybody can get a chance to go to a horror convention, I've never been to one. I went to my first one this year, and I plan on going. Now they're doing Hunt Valley twice a year, starting uh, in 2023. So I'm definitely going back in April. So definitely look for, and it doesn't have to be like a Monster Media, which is relevant to like Pennsylvania, Maryland, and New Jersey, but you can right, go right, one in Colorado, and there's there's uh, mm -hmm. horror conventions everywhere. Just a simple Google search will show you what is in your area and what conventions they are. And it's really a great time. And then not, not even just the guests, but the amazing vendors that are there that have so many I know. one of a kind items that you could buy. Like amazing. I know. It's so awesome. Yeah. I actually, I forgot I had these here. I'll quick show these. Um, I have, uh, you'll, you'll appreciate these. So first I have Quinn Lord in costume photo op. Awesome. And then I have uh, Tom Morga in costume photo op. Ooh. Uh, and then this one is Warrington Gillette uh, in costume as a mass Jason. 
Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so that's that was awesome. so so much fun. So definitely support your horror conventions, like Angela was saying, like support them. And they're they're all over the country. Like they're not just strictly, you know, LA or you know, New England area. Nope, they're like, everywhere and they're, they're everywhere. They're, yeah. You might do a Google yep. search and be like, wow, that's five minutes away from me. I live in an isolated town. How is it possible? I know, I know. I know, but, and the, you know, at comic book stores, at you know, arcades, yep. you know, pinball places, yep. it's just a lot. There's a whole niche out there that takes us back to yep. times that you know were actually really, really fun. Yeah. Everything is just on a bigger scale now, but yes, yeah. definitely get out there and find your, you know, nearest horror convention. Yeah. And if you're and in the really Denver area. Yeah. You know, we've got May 12th through the 14th, Rocky Mountain Nightmares, and then September, I believe, 14th through 16th, mm -hmm. and it's um, the Colorado Festival of Horror. So awesome, definitely awesome. come out. Yeah, and you get to meet people you either grew up watching or you, you're fans of the movies that they're in or whatever. Like, you get to meet these people, and like nine times out of ten, they're the best people you've ever met. <laughs> I know they are. I know. Like the whole blind crew, you know, Sarah French and Joe Netter and yeah. Marcel Walls. They're all very good friends of mine. And Sherry mm -hmm. Davis, I hosted her for Colorado Festival of Horror. Mm -hmm. And she's, you know, they, everybody was here. And I'm on my, you know, pretty boy. Um, I got them all to sign. Nice. They autographed the uh, the one that was a ticket. And then the other one is from Trick or Street Studios. Nice. So that's nice. available. That's awesome. That's awesome. So the last question I do got for you is, do you um, have anything else that you would like to promote? Social media, websites, any other films coming out um, that you would like to promote? Anything else at all? So um, you can follow um, the company at uh, AngelaJosephProductions.com. You can follow me on Facebook at Angela Joseph. Uh, you'll find me on um, Twitter at Shared Economy US. And on um, Instagram, uh, I believe it's connected to my Facebook. But yeah, if you okay. search Angela Joseph, you'll find you'll okay. find me on all, all the all the different socials. Um, okay. And of course, my IMDb. Give that a look and a like. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a lot of projects coming out. I've got um, an international film um, which will be out soon. It's called Bolts. And it's about uh, um, the fur trafficking trade. So okay. that should be uh, very, very uh, fun. And um, we've also got um, Bermuda Island from the Mahal Brothers. That'll be coming out next year. Arena Wars next year. And Night of the Tommyknockers is coming out on November 19th. They're having their premiere. So those are um, uh, some some more um, Mahal uh empire films that i'm in that i'm producing and then um gosh rocky mountain nightmares in may of 2023 uh, colorado festival of horror in september of 2023 out here in colorado follow me and you will see all kinds of amazing guests awesome sounds like awesome. Awesome. thank you so much angela for joining me this evening Thank you for having me, Scotty. Absolutely. And anybody watching this, please, uh, you know, check out my other interviews I've done. I have plenty of others scheduled to come out as well. Um, and don't forget to slash that like button and uh, slash that subscribe button to subscribe to me on YouTube. And of course, if you're listening on, uh, you know, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, and all the other podcasts and platforms, please give me a rate, like, comment. Thank you so much. Check virtual merch booths for, uh, you know, signature t-shirts like this, slash Scotty. And again, thank you, Angela, for joining me. It's been an honor. I loved, I had so much fun. Thank you. Me too. Bye. Absolutely. Bye. <laughs>